Well, I'm here with, uh, through Zoom, my parents, Ann and Joe Scheidler, who are at the Pro-Life Action League's headquarters in Chicago. I'm at our office out in Aurora, Illinois, where we established an office some years ago, and Planned Parenthood opened a mega center out here, and I happen to live here in Aurora. And we are getting together today to talk about the news that's been breaking over the last couple of days, uh, claiming that uh, Jane Roe, known, better known in the pro-life movement as Norma McCorvey, uh, was never truly pro-life after her announced conversion in 1995. New videos coming out on FX that um, claims that she, or apparently claims that she uh, never really had changed her position and it was all just an act or something like that. We haven't seen the, the documentary yet that won't be out for a couple of days, but I invited my parents to come and talk to us a little bit about their experience with Norma McCorvey, somebody that they knew quite well through many, many years in, in the pro-life movement. Uh, Mom and Dad, thanks for joining us on this video. Sure. No, no problem. So um, we were trying to hunt down dates for, for when you first might have encountered her. Sounds like it was 1989. Still trying to figure out whether it was in New York or Washington, D.C., but a league staff member named Tommy Romano, who was with us at the time, uh, met her at, uh, at some kind of a meeting in New York or D.C., some kind of a pro-abortion event, and, uh, and, and interviewed her. This was before her conversion, right? This right. is before her conversion, oh, yes. Yeah. She was sure. very, she had, she had revealed who she, who she in fact was, because for the first several years, she was only known as Jane Roe. And when she revealed who she was, the, um, she was a spokesman for the abortion advocates for now and NARAL. Um, Gloria Allred marched her around and, mm -hmm. and had her you know, take a bow at various pro-abortion events. So she was at one of these events, either New York or Washington, when this photo was taken with uh, Tommy, Tommy Romano. Tommy Romano interviewing her. Um, that, this is a, a photo from Closed, 99 Ways to Stop Abortion, the, uh, the edition from, I think, 1992 or so, where that picture showed, showed up. So here she is kind of defending her position as, as Jane Roe, but then fast forward a few years, and she is now on the speaker circuit um, as a pro-life advocate. Um, I understand that she attended um, the... Meet the Abortion Providers Conference in, in April of 19, what, what, 1996. 96, yes. that's right, up in Lincolnwood uh, at the very first Hyatt Hotel that that location is was. That right? it's, it's been uh, demolished now, but um, Purple Hotel. we had a number of, of great pro life meetings there. Yeah, the Purple yeah. Hotel. Yeah. Um, actually, Sandra Kano, who was um, Doe, and um, uh, Bernard Navinson also testified at that same Meet the Abortion Providers Conference. Wow, wow. So another yeah. huge couple of converts, especially. Exactly. Yeah, we had about six yeah. of those all together, wow. Meet yeah. the Abortion Providers. And we got um, to hear from so many different people on various parts of, of the abortion industry during those, during those providers' conferences. Right. I think it was a, um, maybe another time that same year of 90. No, a couple of years later, April 1998, she actually testified at the Now versus Scheidler trial on your behalf, Dad. Is that right? I know, and she she really had got the attention of everybody in the courtroom. She she was a funny girl. She talked about selling a, a, a cars, and she sold one car without an engine. <laughs> the guy was delighted. <laughs> yeah, the jury loved that she, story. The jury loved that. <laughs> yeah. But the jury wasn't allowed to actually know that she was Jane Roe from Roe v. Wade. No. 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 One of the know much. many strange aspects of that case. Yeah, the, the judge had some odd rules, and that was one of them. The jury couldn't know that she was Jane Roe, and they couldn't know that Sandra Kano was Doe. Uh, or but that the Henry person, Hyde. Or, or that Henry, Henry Hyde was the congressman. Henry, Henry, Henry Hyde. Henry Hyde is there <laughs> testifying on what a great guy you are, yeah. and they, they aren't even being told that he's a congressman, which would be kind of yeah. impressive you know, yeah. uh, advocate to have. Um, I think they knew it anyway, but uh, yeah. right. But certainly the press knew it and the press just, they just glommed on to, to uh, Norma in the, um, in the lobby of the federal court building and, you know, pummeled her with questions. Interestingly, the, uh, the abortion side didn't want Norma to testify. I think they might've been afraid the jury would figure out. Mm -hmm. 
who she was or that because she's a bit of a loose cannon, she might actually say who she was while she was on the stand. So the first day we, we um, had her fly in from Texas to testify, they kept another guy, Keith Tucci, on the stand for hours and hours and hours all afternoon until it was the end of the day and, and court was over for the day. And she had to go back home. But she had a flight. She, she was willing, yeah, she had a flight. So, and she was willing to come back again, God love her, she did. And um, they'd run out of excuses and uh, other witnesses they could delay with. So. That's a kind of cynical tactic when you know somebody has to leave town and not let them, not let them uh, get up on the oh, stage. Yeah, they did a lot um, of yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I understand um, that at that time, you really had an opportunity to get to know her a little better. I understand there was a conversation with her and Joan Appleton waiting for, for, for her to be able to go up on the witness yeah. stand. Tell me a little okay. bit, tell us all about a little bit more about that conversation and what you learned about her then. Did you want to? Well, well, Joan Appleton, just for a little context, was the nurse um, director of the um, abortion clinic in um, Chair of uh, Fair, Fairfield. Was that it? in Virginia? In Virginia, yeah, um, we have pictures. Mm -hmm. and, and there were, were pictures <laughs> taken of, of uh, Joe um, up on a platform uh, talking to women that were trying to go into that clinic. And... Um, uh, Joan had, had photographed him up on this platform over the fence in her days as a, a um, abortion advocate, you know, running this clinic. And after she converted, she gave him that picture. So um, I have many pictures so, of me with former, with, with abortion. former abortionists. Yes, and that, that's really an interesting thing that so many of our, our very, very dear friends ended up being people who came out of the abortion industry. Yeah. But spending that afternoon in, in the... Um, that evening actually in the hotel after Norma had not been allowed to testify, uh, waiting to take her to the airport. And, and she talked about the burden of having her name associated with um, the decision that legalized abortion across America. And it weighed so heavily on her. She just felt, I mean, she, and you tell her, you know, it wasn't your fault. You were used by those lawyers. Um, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, they were looking for a pregnant girl who they could manipulate and they made her promises that they didn't keep. Mm -hmm. And uh, she ended up having the child she was pregnant with at the time and, and placing that child for adoption. Well, she never had um, an abortion herself. No, never did have an abortion herself. No. I found but, a picture. You, you could tell how I found this picture from the uh, providers conference Oh yeah, Joe, to get my dad, dad together with with Norma. One of those photos that you were just referencing of. Well, she sent us her book too, in which she actually gives the date of her conversion and all. So yeah, she read that yeah, as she as she presented a copy of of her book, One by Love, which I believe she pr must have published in '95. But um, her inscription says to Joe and Anne, "Hang in there, sweeties." Much love, Miss Norma. She loved to be called Miss Norma. She she had just kind of a, you know, that Southern thing about her with the, the sweeties and things like that. But she, uh, ap under her signature, it says, In Sin, 73, In Grace, 95. So you oh, can, can kind of see that. So it's, it must be really hard for somebody like you guys who has spent time with this woman, received such direct kind of affirmation of her pro-life convictions and the sorrow that she experienced for her role in ushering in legal abortion throughout the United States, to believe that it was all an act, that it was just a fakery the whole time. How do you respond a, to that, those claims? Well, I just think it's, it's not true. She was, I knew her that well, that she, she, was, she became a very good person and was very, very repentant of having ever been involved in abortion. She was very sincere on that. What, the, what I can't understand is how she could have, uh, I mean, even if she somehow was faking it, why would she want to testify in, the, in favor of somebody who was doing so much direct action against the abortion industry that you're being sued by the abortion providers and the National Organization for Women as a, as a racketeer organizing, you know, the closing of abortion clinics? You'd think... Yeah. You know, I, I can understand a deep a double agent, you know, having to go into deep cover, but that seems really way beyond what you'd be willing to do. 
Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it, in the article I read about this upcoming um, uh, documentary, she uh, supposedly said that, that she joined the pro-life or pretended to join the pro-life movement for the money. Well, she certainly never got any money from us. She did not get paid to testify in the trial. We covered the cost of her airfare and a hotel, but she certainly was never paid to testify. And she was not paid and nor was anyone else who ever testified in the Meet the Abortion Providers conferences. All of them looked on it as an opportunity to set the record straight and to kind of undo some of the harm done by advocating abortion. And so, Almost like reparations or something for yeah yeah, yeah. she was all, she was willing to talk about it even though yeah. it hurt her uh, to to encourage people to, to become active in pro life. I remember she wrote a poem that she delivered at um, at an event we had because she, she also appeared for Speak Out Illinois um, on the I think it was must have been the 25th anniversary of Roe v Wade. Mm -hmm. She and Sandra and and Bernard spoke at Speak Out Illinois. And I think it was on that occasion that she um, recited a poem right. that she'd written about, I think it was called, Where Have All the Children Gone? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Very hard to square that level of, you know, of commitment to the cause with some sort of a long-term fakery. We'll have to see what the documentary we, says. Or another book, too. We have, uh, we uh, have it. Yeah. What's that? But, um, I don't know. Something funny is going on because, uh, as she says there, you know, she she entered sin in '73 when she became active in abortion, and then when she converted, um, it, it became grace. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe she was true to her religion. She became a Catholic and all um, throughout her life. And she so, gave up quite a bit uh, in her personal life for her pro-life and Christian commitment, um, you know, she was pretty upfront about the fact that she was a lesbian and her very, very dear friend, Connie, um, she gave up that relationship. Yes. They continued to be friends, but she mm -hmm. gave up that le lesbian relationship and it was not easy to do. Wow. Um, so she made sacrifices to prove that she rejected her former life. That's been widely reported that um, former pro-life activist uh, Rob Shank um, has said that uh, that she was mistreated by the pro-life movement and there was a, some kind of uh, it, you know unethical behavior or something like that. Um, do you have any response to to the possibility that she may have been either exploited or ushered into the limelight too soon or anything like that? Well, she, I think she had plenty of time, and she she spoke with uh, pro-lifers all the time. She was always debating and arguing, and finally she um, just went over and joined the pro-life group and was baptized. Uh, who was it? Uh, Flip Benham. Flip Benham. Yeah. And, uh, Actually, one of her complaints about her involvement with the pro-abortion movement was that they would not let her speak, that they they kind of put words in her mouth, that they would trot her out as a poster girl, but wouldn't let her speak for herself. And she felt that they thought she was too stupid oh. and didn't respect her dignity as an individual. Um, and that was one of the things that attracted her to the pro-life movement because Flip Benham and the kids who's, who uh, invited her to come over to the uh, pro-life center, uh, I think one of the one of his uh, uh, associates in the um, in the uh, pregnancy center had two little girls who came over and they would they would chat with Norma, Miss Norma. They always called her Miss Norma, <laughs> and um, and she finally took them up on their invitation. Pardon me. <clears throat> yeah, she loved children. Um, it, 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 the whole thing is, I I will always think of her as a woman who changed completely from bad to good and ended up a very good person. I had the opportunity to talk to a New York Times reporter about this story uh, yesterday, uh, Jenny Griffin, and uh, I shared one of my stories with, with Norma. Um, I remember in January 2009, we had just published our uh, Sharing the Pro-Life Message Handbook and um, wanted to present 
our very first copy of that book, uh, I have a copy right here I can show, this handbook, Sharing the Polyth Message, our very first copy we gave to anybody outside the office, outside of the team, was to Norma McCorvey in the uh, lobby. It was probably the Hyatt Hotel in Washington. She was the very, very first person to get a copy of that book because we felt like, you know, we wanted to recognize her, her contribution and sort of say thanks to her in that, in that way. Did you right. put an inscription in that book, I wonder? I wonder. I wonder if, if that's sitting someplace. <laughs> if um, somewhere, yeah. You might have done. I, it's so long ago. I unfortunately don't have a photo of that, of that event. But um, that was a real honor to, to get to give that to her. And, and I got to see her many times over the years before she passed away as well. Um, she always was so kind. She always wanted me, wanted me to send greetings to you guys if I, if I saw her when, when uh, she was there. Um, I remember in 2006, you had to do some, some talks for her because she was, wasn't able to be there. She was kind of notoriously a little unreliable on, on, as far as, I mean, tor you can imagine tortured soul. She'd come from a really difficult background and, you know, sometimes pro-lifers would have to step in and do talks for her. You guys did that once. We yeah. did, yeah. And boy, they, I don't know how she could have done it. I mean, we, we went out to speak for Defend Life, Jack Ames, in Baltimore. And uh, Jack is famous for, for just overworking the people who come yeah. to, to speak for him. And so he had the two of us doing talks. And um, I think it was eight talks in three days <laughs> right. or, or something like that. Um, how normal would have been able to manage all by herself to do eight talks in three days? I don't know. But maybe she kind of anticipated that was the case and it gave it, made her sick. But she, <laughs> she, did, she had come down with the flu, I think, and couldn't make yeah. it. But. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. the kind of like, you know, I don't know, intimacy, I would say, maybe in the pro-life movement, willingness to step in for each other and, and to help and to sort of know each other. Um, I mean, I think it is possible for um, converts from the abortion industry to feel like they're being shown as a sort of trophy for the pro-life movement, but I, I do think it's an entirely unintentional on the part of, of the people in the pro-life movement that we do really welcome and, and cherish anyone who has the courage. It's not easy to step away from something you yeah. had you know, especially something like that where your your name is connected with with the whole change in America's culture. N not an easy thing to do. Um, and she could have quietly just changed her mind and never told anybody. But she didn't. She had the courage to come out and be public and to go ahead and, and speak her mind. She certainly was not a polished professional speaker, but she was darn sincere mm -hmm. and just really, you know, herself, very genuine herself. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll have to see what the um, what the documentary, um, aka Jane Rowe on FX, um, really. Yeah. Maybe after it airs, we should uh, do another video. Yeah, I thought about we might want to do that. Have a kind of a recap and see yeah. Yeah. what what our reactions are. And maybe the news reports that we're seeing about her recantation have been blown out of proportion, or have some context to them. So we don't know yet, but. We just wanted to share some of our own experiences and especially you guys with your long history going back to all the way back to 73 and founding the Pro-Life Action League in 1980 and, you know, conferences with abortion providers that she's spoken and all these different encounters to, uh, to give some context for people as they kind of struggle to understand how to under, you know, how to fit this, um, you yeah. know, twist yeah. or development or whatever it is into the, into the larger story. So thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Eric. Okay. Could be All right. Well, we'll, we'll check back with you after time. we watch the documentary and, and see. Yeah, what maybe she was, it was a joke at the end. <laughs> she always had a sense <laughs> of humor. Yeah, she did. She sure did. She sure did. Well, thanks again, and we'll talk again real soon. Okay. okay. God bless. Thanks, Eric. God bless you.